Hello again, and thanks for joining us for Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service, hosting today's show. Fire danger showing uh, not a lot. Uh, we've got a small area here up around the, uh, well, in the upper Yukon Valley, Yukon Flats there, uh, right around the, where the Porcupine and Yukon Rivers area there, but a very small area of barely high fire danger. And then some scattered areas of minimal high fire danger here along the uh, northwest coast. No attack valley coming down, Selawick Valley, and a little bit down to the south. And that's about it as far as fire danger goes. Everywhere else was well under the high category. And for satellite imagery, you can see cloudiness here sort of creeping its way west-southwest, uh, keeping it obviously cloudy here from the North Gulf Coast up across uh, the Copper River Basin on up into the uh, eastern and upper Tanana Valley, 40 mile country all the way up toward Eagle. A little bit of clearing here over the uh, northeast upper Yukon Flats. Showers developing along the Brooks Range, eastern Brooks Range, actually from the north slope back in toward and expanding over the Koyukuk uh, roughly to the Kobuk Valley and then a band of uh, fairly decent showers and thunderstorms here extending southward into the Kuskokwim Valley, all the way down into northeast Bristol Bay, and that uh, bringing as much as uh, four to five tenths of an inch of precipitation today at places like McGrath. Portman had about uh, three tenths of an inch of precipitation there. And then back to the west, skies clearing out here over the yukon Kuskokwim Delta areas, down toward uh, uh, Togiak, and also to the east, skies trying to clear out but uh, still clouds across south central Alaska. And the southeast coast today had uh, showers to start with, but that uh, improved this afternoon. As you can see, those are tapering off, hanging on there at Petersburg, where they had uh, about two tenths of an inch of precipitation during the day today in about the last six hours. But everywhere else, just a few hundredths of an inch down south, dry up to the north. But another trough here off the coast. Now I'll be bringing some more showers and clouds in. Uh, overnight tonight, but back to the west, storm free, actually high pressure building over the Bering Sea, and that uh, directing any storminess out here northward, and then that'll be sliding eastward. As you can see a couple of bands here creeping their way across the Bering Strait. That brings some moisture in toward the uh, Wales, Tin City area, but uh, just some clouds down toward St. Lawrence Island, along with some sunshine there at uh, Savunga this afternoon. Sunshine also Kotzebue on up to Point Hope, Cape Lisbon, and uh, much of the western Arctic coast areas seeing uh, sunshine today with uh, VFR conditions. Until you get over toward the uh, Kaktovik area, they were down in some fog today, uh, keeping it uh, IFR, but that was also improving as the afternoon wears on. But uh, generally uh, partly sunny over the Alaska Peninsula, they're mostly cloudy here over the Aleutians on out to Shimia. They were down to about a mile in fog for the visibility. Otherwise, uh, not too many reporting stations came in or carried fog during the afternoon. And uh, Kodiak Island, not too bad. There were some developing showers today around Kodiak. Uh, a few showers there with this batch of clouds off to the east and southeast there. And then here's a trough that brought the uh, moderate amounts of rain into the Cuscombe Valley, extending over toward the uh, Western Alaska range and then the thunderstorms on the increase this afternoon all the way back up toward the northwest there into the uh, southern slopes of the Western Brooks range and possibly the uh, toward the North Tack Valley not quite reaching there. You can see the clear skies here from the Seward Peninsula up across the southeastern Chukchi Sea on into the western north slope that dark area there that's the lower cloud deck that was uh, hanging in, especially earlier today, along the central and eastern Arctic coast with the fog over toward Kaktovik. But the uh, sunshine here over the northeast, that triggering some shower activity, uh, which uh, probably will develop into thunderstorms this afternoon on down toward the Brooks Range. But generally dry, partly sunny, south central Alaska, a few showers over the Kenai Peninsula, and the southeast coast, uh, just uh, seeing scattered showers again diminishing here this afternoon. But for tonight, that trough off the coast will move in, so showers will increase, especially over the southern or the central and southern areas. We'll see the best chance of showers, just a risk to the north there 
Low clouds, fog, drizzle also along the immediate coastline, making for lower flying conditions. A weak trough here keeps showers all the way from the Prince William Sound area and North Gulf Coast and across the central eastern Copper River Basin to the upper Tanana Valley with some diminishing thunderstorm activity there over the interior in the Alaska Range. Showers persist but begin to uh, diminish here as the trough weakens over the Kuskokwim Valley. And that'll extend up into the uh, north central interior. Should be mostly dry off to the northeast there with areas of patchy fog along the Arctic coast through the Bering Strait and into the Bering Sea here. A very weak trough may bring some drizzle or light rain or a shower to the Pribilof Islands possibly. Otherwise high pressure dominating the weather out there. And then this system down to the south may start to kick those southeast winds up. We'll see for tomorrow a little bit there, but uh, definitely no gale warnings coming in with this system as it stays mostly to the south. This front trying to push across one band. Again, that band of moisture still stuck here in the Bering Strait area. Now a little more extensive over the Seward Peninsula up to the northwest coast. So you'll lose the sun you had today there along the northwest coast. Chance of drizzle tries to make the central Arctic coast. And then thunderstorm threats, uh, possibly down in the Susitna Valley over to the, well, the Madnuska and Susitna Valley tomorrow afternoon with uh, probably just a shower or two over the Kenai Peninsula. Partly and mostly sunny Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound. Thunderstorms developing in the Copper River Basin and also up across the central Tana Valley, the White Mountains, on up to the eastern Brooks Range area. High pressure holding out here over the western Bristol Bay area, just east of the Perbolofs, ridging westward. So that's, uh, again, keeping that storm down to the south. We see a little bit of an increase in those winds uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, after, uh, tomorrow night, and then Monday looks a little windier, definitely wetter here for the uh, western into the central Aleutians and also an increase in the winds with uh, some moisture sliding on up, uh, light moisture, drizzle, light rain, fog, with uh, winds maybe 15 to 25 miles an hour toward Nikolsky here in the afternoon, but high pressure now right up along the coastline, sunny, warmer here over the central western interior, isolated thunderstorms, Talkeetna Mountains uh, around Denali Park and over the uh, upper Tanana Valley from the Copper River Basin actually northward there. Just showers along the Eastern Brooks Range. Some uh, moisture slips on into Barrow as that system comes west over the top of the big high here over the southeast bearing along the coast. And that ridging into the Gulf of Alaska. So it looks like a dry day coming up for the Panhandle on Monday with uh, mostly sunny skies. Northwest winds along the coast 10 to 20 miles an hour. Morning low clouds and fog also persisting into the afternoon right along the outer coastline, becoming mostly sunny over the uh, inside waters, and especially over toward the border. And for lows tonight, lower to mid 50s, mild here over the central interior, back into the Kobuk Valley, even Kotzebue, low 51. Arctic coast, lower to mid 30s. South central Alaska, upper 40s to mid 50s. Panhandle, upper 40s. Copper River Basin, mostly in the 40s and also for the Bristol Bay Area 45 to 50, cooling to the mid lower 40s out towards Shimia. And the highs tomorrow, 75 to 80, upper Yukon Valley with temperatures near 70 for the central Tanana Valley. Looks like upper 60s to possibly mid 70s, the Sitna Valley, and uh, much drier, warmer conditions for the uh, Kuskokwim Valley as well, 65 to 72 for the highs, and into the lower 60s for the southeast coast. Otherwise, staying in the 40s, mid-40s, St. Lawrence Island, upper 40s for the Perbolofs, mid to upper 40s for the Aleutians, lower 50s probably around in Alaska, and then warming into the 60s for northeast Bristol Bay. And looking at uh, Monday morning's low temperatures, very mild, upper 50s now for the upper Yukon Valley after those warm afternoon temperatures tomorrow with uh, lower 50s out to the west into the Kobuk Valley and out toward Kotzebue. Upper 30s, mid to upper 30s central eastern Arctic coastal areas with uh, upper 40s here over the southwest part of the state. Uh, Bethel looks like lows in the upper 40s to McCoryak 45, same thing at St. Paul. And mid 40s for Adak and Atka. Kodiak lows in the lower 50s and lower to mid 50s for the lows here south central Alaska to near 50 in the Copper River Basin. About the same for what you've been seeing here for the southeast coast. High temperatures Monday afternoon back into the 70s to mid to upper 70s here over the eastern interior. 70s now all the way back in toward Bethel, lower 70s into northeast Bristol Bay, King Salmon, Igigik, highs in the lower 70s. 
and well into the 70s, the Sitna Valley, Manuska Valley, and into the areas of the Kenai Peninsula, as well as the Copper River Basin, and even temperatures rising with a little more sunshine over the Panhandle, looking at mid to upper 60s, maybe reaching 70 in a few areas, otherwise the Aleutians and Perloffs right around 50. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Well, tomorrow we start out with a lot of VFR here through the uh, north central interior, westward out to the Seward Peninsula, hitting marginal VFR out toward the coast and then along and off the coast. We've got IFR there from the Chukchi Chukchi Sea, southward through the Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island along the southwest coast here. Uh, looks like into Cuscoan Bay and then on down to the uh, Alaska Peninsula on the Bristol Bay side. And then central Aleutians eastward to about Shimia, marginal VFR here, western northern Alaska range. A uh, fair more portion of the Copper River Basin down across Prince William Sound, North Gulf Coast, all the way down toward Dixon Entrance. And for the afternoon, that uh, breaks up quite a bit here with uh, some marginal VFR and showers lingering down south. Marginal VFR also, oh, just west Elephant Cove across Yakutat to Cape Yakutag up into the Wrangell Mountains. Good VFR, the interior. Kodiak Island, Kenai Peninsula, all the way up to the central and eastern Arctic coast there, and then you hit the marginal VFR. Thunderstorms here through the uh, eastern interior all the way down to the Kenai Peninsula and to just about Lake Iliamna. And out here to the west uh, for the afternoon, IFR, Nidavak Island, back across, looks like it'll catch the Perbolofs on, over toward the western Aleutians. ADAC eastward, marginal VFR, until you get to about... Uh, Sand Point to Kodiak, and you're back into the VFR. And for the Monday morning forecast, interior looking really good to start the day out. IFR along the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, right along the coastline there, the marginal VFR, just a short distance inland. Then you hit the VFR, the VFR areas, and still some uh, marginal VFR here persisting, say, from uh, the Toke Northway area down along the border to Yakutat, otherwise the Panhandle, VFR. IFR along uh, Cuscoan Bay here, St. Lawrence Island to the south side of the Seward Peninsula. Looks like uh, Nome, maybe White Mountain in on that with IFR southwest bearing and just all of the Aleutians to the western Alaska Peninsula. And then for Monday afternoon, again VFR in the interior, less of a thunderstorm threat here, a uh, little bit uh, and farther to the east actually as well. But uh, VFR back to the west, again, approaching the coastline, you hit the marginal VFR with the IFR along and off the coast there. IFR, Southern Bering, Aleutians. Uh, marginal VFR now for the Alaska Peninsula to Kodiak Island. It looks like some marginal VFR slipping on up into southern central Cook Inlet, as well as uh, Prince William Sound during the afternoon hours. And for Anatovic. Looking good tomorrow, risk of a thunderstorm, VFR flying conditions there, at again, same forecast VFR. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, good VFR, risk of an afternoon thunderstorm and rainy, same forecast, uh, wide open, but thunderstorms developing, a possibility also for Windy and Mintasta and or Isabel. Mar VFR trending toward marginal VFR uh, in the afternoon, but uh, Mintasta starting out marginal and becoming VFR. And so we, both those passes could see some marginal VFR at times during the day tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, pretty good. Tanita, though, VFR, risk of a thunderstorm in the afternoon. Portage, marginal VFR early, becoming VFR probably by mid-morning through the afternoon. And for Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR, again, breaking out to VFR uh, probably before noontime and throughout the afternoon. Freezing level, 6,000 feet here across the southeast coast, 8,000 feet now over the interior. A little bit of a cool pocket right here only slipping down about 6,000 feet in a couple areas there. Otherwise, pretty uniform. A little bit warmer out over the Bering Sea here, 10,000 feet down across Adak and Atka. And for icing, some areas of scattered mixed icing above about 8,000 feet here, all uh, convective in nature associated with the showers, thunderstorms, and then also here over the southern panhandle, those lingering showers. Jet stream, high pressure building now starting to uh, take over the Bering Sea and inland areas now continue for the next several days with the main jet to the south or up to the north. And 9,000 feet, high pressure really shows up at this elevation here. Uh, Bristol Bay, light winds over the interior, southwest 20 to 25, disturbance working its way northeastward. 
here across the northern bearing, kind of putting a squeeze on the atmosphere as well as this low here with 35 to 40 knot winds just south of the Aleutians. 3,000 feet uh, looking good here. Northwest 5 to 10, 15 to 20 back across the Chuck Sea. See light over the Bering Sea, a little brisker along the western Aleutians. And with that, below 5,000 feet, look for some isolated moderate chop around Adak and Atka. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. The Space Weather Prediction Center has had a long-standing relationship with the power industry, so they've been aware that solar storms, the geomagnetic storm piece of that, can affect the operation of their systems and induce extra currents and loads on those systems that can either trip those systems offline or, or in the worst of cases, cause damage. That relationship goes back for several decades, in fact. A big incident in 1989 where part of Quebec was tripped offline that affected something like six million customers for about nine hours. I think that really raised the awareness in the power industries. When we get the alert, we watch the grid and start looking for issues. Are we seeing a decline in voltage? Are we seeing equipment failures? And we readjust the system to try to mitigate those problems, try to keep the lights on and keep it from going out. So we're averaging about 500, 550 kilometers per second. If we didn't have this early warning, we wouldn't see it until our sensor saw it getting more information quicker and faster before the storm hits, not during the storm, is a big improvement. In the long term, I think what we need and what we're moving toward the U.S. as a whole is better modeling, fully understanding this phenomenon, understanding how it would impact specific systems. Rather than actually experiencing a storm, we can simulate storms in our software and see what the impact is. We try to get ahead of it. We always plan that if there's an outage, how can we keep the lights on? What's the best process to prevent it? In the end, five, ten years from now, there's going to be a whole mix of operational procedures driven by what we do on prediction and warning. And then there also will probably be some level of hardware controls to ensure the reliability of the grid. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. There's different types of impacts on communication systems. And the HF, we call the high frequency, which is that band of communications, 3 to 30 megahertz. But it's a very important band of radio communication because it's used widespread. It's used, for example, by the airlines. HF radio is most commonly used for position reporting when you're going across the ocean airspace, which is devoid of, of radar. And, and ATC can't see you, so you're, it's up to you to report your position and your altitude and your speed. HF works great most of the time, except during a big flare. And during a big flare, that HF communication capability could be gone within a minute or two. So as soon as we see something happening in there, or we see a flare, it's one of the first things we do is alert the aviation community, hey, big flare, HF's gonna be impacted. Once we know that there's an event going on, then the aviation industry and the airlines can react to that. They can alter their routes over the poles. They can lower the altitudes that they're flying at, or maybe decide not to fly at all in the interest of their passenger safety. So that's just one example of how HF is used, but the emergency response community will use it a lot too. It's one of their primary backups. 
when you've lost connectivity between certain government agencies, it gives you that long range coverage to talk from out of state to federal governments or from the FEMA locations to the state uh, emergency operations centers. So if you've got a big hurricane impact in the coastline, whatever big city, uh, we've got the cell towers down and whatnot, we've got emergency communication folks in there. Those folks are very familiar with space weather and how it impacts their systems. Here in recent years, it was used during Katrina when we had a lot of communications outages down there. It was also used during Hurricane Ike. There was an outage of the telephone circuits with the Texas State Emergency Office, so it was used in both of those situations. So when we talk about backup, especially for the airlines, typically they'll have SATCOM, so it'll be satellite communication. The satellite technology that emergency responders use could be GPSs, could be satellite phones, satellite data terminals. Space weather events can impact SATCOMs. The impact can range from a nuisance to loss of a spacecraft. So we will give them the heads up. If we have space weather events, flares, whatnot, they need to know what's impacting their systems. Situational awareness is key. Time is of essence to these folks. Again, it's life and death. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back uh, to today's sea ice analysis, uh, showing uh, things moving westward, uh, slowly westward, and that's starting to pull the ice off the coast here on the uh, west side and central areas. And that uh, small area of uh, white I have on here, that uh, was shore fast. That's pulled off the coast now, sitting uh, off the coast. This area right through here is uh, sort of melting in place and uh, it's going against a current from that's coming up from the south. So what does it all mean? A continued slow thaw for the next several days as the uh, opening up area here in Mackenzie Bay slowly expands to the west. Coastal water forecast west northwest 15 all along the coast there. Uh, more like 10 knots up on the extreme north coast. Lynn Canal, south 20 tomorrow, seas 4 feet. 10 knot winds for Stevens Passage and Clarence Strait. Forecast for Monday, northwest 15 for Clarence Strait, north 20, Stevens Passage, but uh, be coming south in the afternoon for northern Lynn Canal, coming up to 20 knots, 4 foot seas. West winds at 10 on the north coast, otherwise 15, increasing to 20 knots there in the central and south coast, 5 to 6 foot seas. Prince William Sound, southwest 10, two foot seas tomorrow. West southwest 15 knots for the North Gulf Coast with four foot seas, southwest 20 for the Barren Islands. And west 20, Kamishak Kem Bay, Cook Inlet, south winds, light with seas slight at two feet. Outlook for a Monday, not much change here. Cook Inlet, south to southwest, uh, barely a breeze at 10 knots, southwest 15, Kamishak Bay. Light southerlies there for the Barren Islands and west winds at 10 turns south at 10 here for the eastern North Gulf Coast. Light westerlies for Prince William Sound. Bristol Bay, west 15 knots tomorrow and for the Alaska Peninsula east northeast at 15 with three to four foot seas. And then uh, Castle Cape to Sitkanak, southwest at 10 but 15 knots out of the southwest and the east side of Kodiak Island. Even a little stronger, southwest 20 for Shillikoff Strait with those four foot seas. Monday, lighter winds there, west at 10 knots over the strait, and southwest 15 continues off the coast of Kodiak. Light winds from the west, southwest of Sitkanak. And for the Alaska Peninsula, east-northeast at 15 with 3 to 5 foot seas, while Bristol Bay will see a light westerly wind at 10 knots. And for the Fox Islands tomorrow, we've got east-northeast winds in the forecast at 15 to 20 knots, strongest on the Pacific side of the islands. Two to three foot seas here on the Bering Sea side, south side four to five feet. Adakanatka east winds at 20 knots with three to six foot seas. And 20 knot easterlies all the way out to Shimia and probably the Commodoreskis with seven foot seas. Outlook for Monday, small craft advisories here, just about, well, all areas of the Aleutians, northeast 25, seas building to 11 feet. And then uh, 
west of ADAC to about Kiska, southeast 30 knots with 12 foot seas. East southeast 25 to 30 for the central Aleutian seas up to 11 feet and 25 knot winds for the Fox Islands with those seas also building up to the 5 to 10 foot range. Southwest winds 15 to 20 knots for the southwest coast tomorrow as well as uh, St. Matthew Island with the Pribilof south at 10 3 foot seas. Small craft advisories for St. Lawrence Island but southwest 15 in Norton Sound. Outlook for Monday, southwest 15 here from Nunavak Island, St. Lawrence Island into Norton Sound for uniform winds, but south of Nunavak Island, a light northwest breeze, St. Matthew Island south 15, Perbolofs becoming east and increasing to 20 knots with four foot seas. Beaufort Sea Coast east side here, uh, east at 10, about 15 on the central coast. Southerlies at 15 west side from Cape Beaufort all the way down to Wales. We've got small craft advisories, 25 knots out of the south with five to six foot seas. Those come down a little bit, uh, south to southwest, uh, 20 knots from Wales all the way up the west side here, but falling back to 10 knots toward the central coast and then east southeast to 10 for the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline. And for tonight, again, diminishing thunderstorms and showers will be most prevalent here along the trough in the Copper River Basin up into the uh, upper Tanana Valley, 40 mile country, and then again this trough back here that made for a wet day over the Kuskokwim Valley. That's going to pretty much remain in place. Some of that moisture will slip eastward into the Alaska Range. Maybe some showers get into the western Susitna Valley with uh, scattered showers down in northeast Bristol Bay. Rain increases, clouds and precipitation increase a little bit, nothing heavy, as that trough, weak trough, moves into the panhandle, which tomorrow dissipates mostly sunny the next day. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating. <laughs>